Hello. When dealing with models, you either do an explorative approach in the Wicca Investigator or Wicca Explorer, where you then investigate how your model performs, for instance, uh, via cross validation, and you plot the errors for your samples. And on the other hand, if you're looking more at a statistical evaluation of your model on your data, then you would use something like the Wicca Experimenter, where you then have repeated runs of cross-validation and you then compute means and standard deviations for the various uh, fold pairs that you've um, accumulated over your multiple runs. So if you do, for instance, 10 runs of 10 for cross-validation, you have like 100 data points where you then compute mean standard deviation from. However, last week a colleague of mine had the problem that he had a very small data set where he actually wanted to know how much on a sample basis the predictions would vary. Was it was quite easy doing that in the, uh, in the workflow. Um, I thought this would be actually quite a useful feature in the WEC investigator itself. So as of last week, we now have something called repeated cross-validation in the investigator. I'm going to show you how it works. So it lies a little bit in between a, the usual single cross-validation run and what the experimenter does. So I'll get to that in a second. First, I'm just going to load the simple data set. I'm going to go on the classify tab and in your evaluation drop-down box, you can now choose repeated cross-validation. And you can now see that there is an additional um, parameter called runs in there. And in this case, we want to perform 10 runs. So in contrast to the experimenter, this looks at the statistics per cross-validation run, not on a single uh, train test fold pair. So if we do 10 runs, then we have 10 data points and compute basically mean standard deviation from that. Or if you do a leak one out, for instance, um, then you can do that as well. So we have a data set. It's a false data set. Um, I'm going to use favorite for the regression. Output generators, I have to remove the ones that I normally use. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you have a repeated subfolder now, sub package, and there you find prediction sample plot statistics. So I'm just gonna choose statistics here. And since it's a numeric data set, I wanna have uh, the correlation coefficient, uh, root mean squared error, and that will do it for the time being. Um, number of decimals three is sufficient add that to my output generators and um, then running it. Cool. And now I have here a table and I have a mean of 0.916 and a standard deviation of 0.04 and a root mean squared error. Of course, I can then um, also plot the whole thing and therefore I can use something called the sample plot. So because it does a plotting per sample, and um, you can choose what you want to have as your center point where the x is basically being plotted it can be either the mean or the median and with the lower and the upper value that's being plotted can either the min minimum so the smallest prediction ever made across the runs or the 25th percentile um, which is um, or for the upper range you can do either the maximum value ever found or the 75th quartile percentile. So it's basically if we're using the percentile 25 and 75 we basically get the interquartile range. So um, paintlet we're using the cross paintlet so you can also choose something else and the range paintlet um, is the simple arrow paintlet that then has a little whisker plot there and we can do that. So I'll add that and I regenerate the outputs. So now we have the plot. And you can see these little whisker plots then around here. So if I click on one, 
you can then see the y, this is sort of like my x, in this case it was the median, and then you can see the range from minimum to maximum, which is 25th to 75th percentile. So you can see that those are actually following quite nicely. Um, and you can also, of course, um, output the predictions too, and you can also then here choose the same that you want to do, mean, median, uh, and so on. I'll add that, and then just regenerate that. And then here I have the predictions, which you can then, of course, then save somewhere, and then do further things with it if you wanted to plot it differently, for instance, or further process things, or send it to a colleague. Overall, quite a useful feature because you can see what the variation is per sample. So you can see whether certain samples in your data set are misbehaving or whether all of them are misbehaving or whether it's just happening in certain ranges. So for instance, here it's more happening in this range and there, where is there more variation happening? But other ones are actually quite quite um, close to um, the um, median of the prediction, so it's actually quite good. Yes, so that's that, and of course um, this particular plot makes sense for numeric predictions, um, not so much for um, air classes that are nominal. However, you can still generate statistics um, for it, which is still valuable. Um, 